Maxwell and the Champagne Music Makers in specially selected shows for public television. Hi, I'm Joanne Castle, happily at the piano here in Escondido one more time. Now listen to this. Believe it or not, I haven't played that song since 1968, when Hair opened on Broadway. You know, Aquarius has sort of become the theme song of the 60s, and they even did it a few times on the Lawrence Welk Show. Now, the show you're about to see is a fascinating look at the past and tells you something interesting about Mr. Lawrence Welk, the man trying to get through the 60s, just as the rest of America was trying to do. The program was taped in the summer of 1968, a year that has been recognized as a turning point in our country. Now, Time Magazine called it a knife blade that severed the past from the future. You know, that was the year we already had lost Martin Luther King, Bobby Kennedy, and we were losing in Vietnam, and President Johnson had lost his will to run again. We had lost our innocence and a lot of our happiness in our hearts, but not Mr. Welk. Every week, he invited America to forget about everything, kick the great state of Illinois. Well, now little did we know that in just a few weeks, Chicago would be the site of a truly dark part of our history, the riots outside of the Democratic Convention. It's almost as if Mr. Welk subconsciously was trying to establish an upbeat feeling during that summer of 68. And at the end of the show, we sang America the Beautiful, to remind our audience what it was like to be proud Americans, filled with joy and optimism. That positive philosophy of life is the greatest gift I got from Mr. Welk. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very kindly. A pleasant good evening, friends, and a warm welcome. We're so happy to have you along to help us salute the great state of Illinois on its 150th birthday. And here's our show. <laughs> Chicago, Chicago, I'll show you around. 
home for many, many years. Our lovely champagne lady, Norma Simmer, sings a song that is a favorite of many of you folks. It's also one of Norma's favorites. She's so great. I love the way she sings, and by the way, she's a Norwegian girl. All of us have wonderful memories of the days we played in Chicago, especially the great polka dancers we used to see there. The large Polish population in Chicago really used to dance up a storm to this tune. In a lot of ways, 1968 was the end of some things. The heart went out of the civil rights movement. It was the end of Lyndon Johnson's social vision of the great society. And when Eugene McCarthy dropped out of the presidential race, it was the end of the liberals' public stream of peace. But if the 60s ended some things, they prepared the way for others. And one of them was the women's movement. In 1968, Shirley Chisholm, a New York Democrat, became the first black woman ever elected to Congress. This is what she said a few years ago. The struggles that we went through in 68 are coming back to haunt us. 
to tell us that this great bloodless social and political revolution has never been completed. In 1970, the 50th anniversary of the women's winning the right to vote, American women started to get it together and began to fight for legal reform. We've come a long way, baby. Remember that slogan? And we're not finished yet, fellas. Mm -hmm. Women always had equal rights on the Lawrence Welk Show, and we usually got our fair share of the spotlight. Mr. Welk was a man ahead of the times, and it's no accident that the next song was written by a woman. Her name is Ruth Ann Friedman, and it is a very big hit for this talented lady. Speaking out from under a stairway, calling a name that's lighter than air. Who's bending down to give you a rainbow? Everyone knows it's windy. Who's tripping down the streets of the city, smiling at everybody she sees? Who's reaching out to capture a moment? Everyone knows it's windy. And Wendy has stormy eyes that flash at the sound of lies. And Wendy has wings to fly above the clouds. Above the clouds. Above the clouds. Above the clouds. Who's peeking out from under a stairway, calling a name that's lighter than air? Who's bending down to give you a rainbow? Everyone knows it's windy And windy has stormy eyes That flash at the sound of lies And windy has wings to fly Above the clouds Above the clouds Above the clouds Above the clouds Who's tripping down the streets of the city Smiling at everybody Who's reaching out to capture a moment? Everyone knows it's windy. Everyone knows it's windy. Everyone knows it's windy. Illinois show, folks, and it looks like we're in the Windy City. Here are two youngsters who have gained their reputation as the outstanding dance couple in America. Ladies and gentlemen, Sissy King and Bobby Burgess. <laughs>
wonderful performers, and their reputation is richly deserved. Lynn Anderson's fine album titled Promises, Promises has been high on the popularity charts for many weeks. Here is Lynn with one of the great country songs from this album, Bob Ralston at the Clavietta. Liberace used to have an elegant silver candelabra on the top of his piano? Well, that didn't really fit my style of music, so the set designers began to decorate my piano in a different way each week. It started out very simply. Uh, maybe they'd paint a little bright color on it or draw some nice designs on it. And gradually, my piano decor got bigger and more elaborate and very creative. They did everything they could think of to my old upright from blinking lights and horns to fire and smoke for a really hot number. And to top it off, they wouldn't let me see it till I walked out on stage. I used to hold my breath, hoping, hoping that I could still do my number on whatever it was that night. Well, Mr. Welk used to stand backstage and watch me on the television monitor so he could see the way the camera was moving. And on this show, the person who decorated my piano forgot to tell the cameraman that the direction in which he moved made a very big difference. Watch what happens.
Teacher, you know you had the horses going around the wrong way. I know. I'm sure glad that you folks wouldn't see her milk a cow. <laughs> this year marks the 150th anniversary of the great state of Illinois. As a former resident of this wonderful state, I'd like to send along my congratulations and good wishes. And we'd like to remind our friends in Indiana that we'll also be playing at the Indiana State Fair at Indianapolis, August 30th and 31st. Now we bring you the lovely voice of Natalie Nevins with Bob Ralston at the organ. The song, Beautiful Dreamer. Beautiful dreamer, wake unto me. Starlight and dewdrops are waiting for thee. Sounds of the rude world heard in the day. Lord, by the moonlight have all passed away. Beautiful dreamer, queen of my song, list while I woo thee with soft melody. Gone are the cares of life's busy throng. Beautiful dreamer, awake unto me. Beautiful dreamer, awake unto me. Awake, beautiful dreamer. song and a fine rendition. Arthur Duncan enjoys traveling around the country and meeting people. That's why Arthur likes our summer tours. He's crazy about the good old summertime, and that's a cue, Arthur. <laughs> was my buddy Arthur in 1968. And if you saw our PBS tribute special, From the Heart, you know he is dancing just as great as ever. We've been good friends for a long, long time. Art came on the show in July of 1964, and a lot of people don't know this, but with his hiring, The Welk Show became the first weekly variety show to have an integrated cast. Just one more example of Mr. Welk's leading the way. It was the most natural thing in the world for all of us on the show, and he was a part of our family from day one. In those days, it was a courageous thing for the Welk Show to do, and I'm very proud to have worked for the people who made that important decision. Now, even though Art and Bobby Burgess are great dancers, my all-time favorite waltz expert was the one and only Mr. Welk. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Charlotte, the pretty girl who plays the cello in our orchestra, is a native of Chicago. Went to school at Northwestern University. Charlotte and our string section would like to play The Waltz You Saved For Me, a made so very famous by Wayne King, The Waltz King. been a favorite city of show business people. I think this radio interview by newsman Dick Dale will prove my point. Good evening, this is Dick Dale talking to you from the famous Fritzl's restaurant in downtown Chicago, where each evening I chat with showbiz personalities. Sitting beside me are three dancers who are currently appearing at the Chicago Theater. Ladies and gentlemen, the Three Steppers. Good evening, fellas, and welcome to What's the Scoop on the Loop? Hi, Dick. Well, how do you like Chicago? Man, this is the greatest town in the world. This is where we got our start. This is our hometown. Yeah. yeah. My kind of town Chicago is. My kind of town Chicago is. My kind of people too. People who smile at you and time I roam Chicago is calling me home Chicago is one town that won't let you down it's my kind of town Check, gentlemen. Five bucks for a hamburger? 
Two bucks for a cup of coffee? Boy, they don't charge that much in Peoria. Yeah, and the food's a lot better yeah, in Peoria. Right. Well, I think I'd better speak to the owner about this. Oh, yeah, bring it, bring it. Yeah. Yeah. oh how I wished I was in Peoria. Peoria tonight. Oh, how I miss the goils in Peoria. Peoria tonight. Oh, you can pick a morning Gloria right off the sidewalks of Peoria. Oh, how I wished I was in Peoria. Peoria tonight. Oh, how I wished I was in Peoria. Peoria tonight. Oh, how I miss them flies in Peoria. Peoria tonight. Why should we sing Torea Doria when we can sing about Peoria? Oh, how I wished I was in Peoria. Peoria. Tonight. Oh, how I wish I was in Peoria, Peoria, tonight. Oh, how I miss the coils in Peoria, Peoria, tonight. Oh, you can pick a morning glory up right off the sidewalks of Peoria. Oh, how I wish I was in Peoria. I understand my place is a little expensive for you big spenders. How about we talk it over in the kitchen with the dirty dishes? Oh, dirty dishes! I love being in skits like that one. <laughs> Did you notice that I started with my Marilyn Monroe voice? And I ended up with Mae West. You know, doing those bits actually became my favorite part of the show. It was like getting paid for taking a comedy acting class. I had great teachers, too. Some of the guys had worked in vaudeville-type shows most of their lives. We did a lot of funny stuff in the 60s. Little did we know, we were on the cutting edge again. In January of 68, a new series began on TV called Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In. It was an hour of silly one-liners, silly scenes, and blackout skits. Well, the Welk Show had been doing the same kind of stuff for years. Only we didn't say, sock it to me. We did throw a few pies at each other, but never water, because it's so hard to dance on a wet stage, even though the falls might have gotten us a few laughs. <laughs> you know, sometimes Mr. Welk liked to get in his own little laugh at the end of a song, and he would often use me to get it. I was sort of the punchline, you might say, and I loved it. Here, I'll show you what I mean. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we take you to the railroad station in Flossmore, Illinois. This is the hometown of a very valuable man in our organization, our very fine, wonderful producer-director, Jim Hobson. We find Andrew Willis waiting for the evening train. <laughs> train you'll be the reason I'll be waiting for the train I'll be swinging down a country lane timing my time to the evening train roll on over the hill roll on passing the mill roll on nearing the end here she comes here she comes around in the bend you'll be cozy in the cottage small the kind they always fill beside a waterfall With your honey who will give her all Waiting in the sun or rain Waiting in the 
Block Island Line, it is the mighty good road. Oh, the Block Island Line, it is the road to ride. The Rock Island Line, it is a mighty good road. Well, if you want to ride, you gotta ride it like you find it. Get your ticket at the station for the Rock Island Line. It's cloudy in the west, and it looks like rain. Bought me a ticket on a railroad train. Pour on the water, shovel on the coal. Take your head out the window, see the driver's roll. The Rock Island Line, it is a mighty good road. Oh, the Rock Island Line, it is the road to ride. The Rock Island Line, it is a mighty good road. Well, if you want to ride, you gotta ride it like you find it. Get your ticket at the station for the Rock Island Line. The 745 was always late, but arrived today at a quarter to eight. The engineer said when they cheered his name, we're right on time, but this is yesterday's train. Oh, the Rock Island Line, it is a mighty good road. Oh, the Rock Island Line, it is the road to ride. The Rock Island Line, it is a mighty good road. Well, if you want to ride, you gotta ride it like you find it. Get your ticket at the station for the Rock Island Line. Get your ticket at the station for the Rock Island Line. Okay, young lady, you can sit right here. Oh, no, she can't. Oh. Pour on the cold, shorty. First class all the way, that's Larry Hooper. Here's some cheerful philosophy in this fine song written by our friend Bob Thiel. We call on Joe Feeney and all of our singers for the song, What a Wonderful World. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you and i think to myself what a wonderful world i see skies of blue clouds of white the bright blessed day the dark sacred night and i think to myself what a wonderful world. The colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, are also on the faces of people going by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you. I hear babies cry I watch them grow they'll learn much more than I'll ever know and I think to myself what a wonderful world yes I think to myself There's only one of the great songs written in 1968. How about this one?
Tammy Wynette. Oh, she wrote that Grammy-winning song in 1968, and it's still one of the all-time favorite country songs. Now here's another song that is still as popular as ever. Redding recorded that song on December 7, 1967, and was killed in a plane crash three days later. Just one of the bad omens of 1968. It was the number one best-selling record for four weeks in the United States and a huge hit in Britain and Japan. And it won two Grammys, including Best Rhythm and Blues Performance. Now see if you remember this one. Robinson was written by Paul Simon for The Graduate, and the expanded version on an album was a major success. On the surface, the lyrics seemed to be a double-edged look at a troubled woman of the 60s, and then they turn into a wistful look at the decade itself. Where have you gone, Joe DiMaggio? But by the end of the year, another movie song made us feel a whole lot better. The Yellow Submarine, the Terrible Blue Meanies were defeated by music and love. That's what the Beatles wrote in 1968. And that's what we all believed on The Lawrence Welk Show, too. wonderful little girl, Tanya Fallon. Since we're saluting Illinois this evening, we'd like to feature a gentleman who is a native of Quincy, Illinois, 
one of the world's finest Dixieland trombone men, Bob Havens. <laughs> Illinois can be proud of a great showman, too. Here's our young college student, Steve Smith, with a song about the good old days on the south side of Chicago. Pretty girls out walking, honky-tonks ablaze. These were a part of the good old days When I used to swing On the south side of Chicago Twenty-first and Wentworth Was its beating heart The place where action First got its start Back when jazz was king On the south side of Chicago I still can hear Those silver trumpets blowing In little places filled with people glowing New Orleans was groovy Memphis light and gay And who could put down New York's Broadway But there was everything On the south side of Chicago Chicago now there was everything on the south side of Chicago. As bad as 1968 was, it had a really great ending. As someone in show business once said, give them a big finish and they'll forgive you for anything. Well. On Christmas Eve in 1968, three American astronauts became the first men ever to circle the moon. And what's more, they were able to send views of the lunar surface back to Earth by television. What a long way we had come in such a short time. James Lovell, one of those three astronauts, said this, We finally had a success that everyone could look up to. This was pure American. You could talk to a flower child in the street or a senior citizen on Fifth Avenue and everybody had a sense of pride. We were no longer earthbound. America has come a long way since 1968. Maybe not quite far enough, but we'll get there. 
As long as we all hang on to that positive Welk philosophy. Mr. Welk wanted a dramatic and upbeat ending for this program, so he asked Myron to do something a little different. We believe in big innings too, so we've added some of the images of 1968 to his words. I hope you enjoyed this show and remember, peace. While we are paying tribute to Illinois, let's not forget the great man who started his brilliant career in that state, serving Illinois and the country, the immortal Abraham Lincoln. His words are timeless and perhaps have greater meaning today than at any time in the past. We all learned these lines in school, but I feel they can bear repeating today. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that this nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us the living, rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth.
for all creatures great and small coming up.